Hey gang, right on the bay here for a first look at the new number two revision one. Uh, unlike our previous teardown videos, this is going to uh, be a video of how you receive your kit and we're going to build it up. So when you receive your kit this time, uh, the plate is gonna be separate, the PCB and the daughter board are gonna be separate and you're just gonna have your case with the three case parts um, like this. So we are going to kind of tear this down and then build it all up again. So this is a minor revision for the number two. Unlike the number one revision one, which actually had some major aesthetic changes, this has very few aesthetic changes. Most of the changes are internal. Um, there are a couple minor aesthetic changes, but, but they're, they're really very small. Um, this should be a slightly easier kit to build than last time, uh, and it addresses some user feedback that we had. You can find a, like a more in-depth rundown of what those changes are on keycult.io, but the changes are very small. But because there are changes, we decided to bump the revision. So here's how you're going to receive your kit. Uh, let's go ahead first and look at the actual case. So this is the standard layout of the number two revision one. This release has only one colorway. It's this dark gray with a brass accent. Um, but it's also going to come in standard, which we didn't have for the first release, and wind keyless with blockers, which we did have for the first release. So let's take a quick look at this. So here's the number two revision one. You can see that the new big thing is that we have this giant brass piece on the bottom with a really nice silk screened logo so that you still get that black on brass accent. Uh, we also have new molded, custom molded feet. Um, instead of the die cut feet that we used the first time. Um, these feet are also going to be available to the people who bought uh, something in the first round of number twos. So that's a quick look at the case. Um, now let's look at the PCB and plate. Uh, both of these have major contributions from Wilba, who is uh, a friend of ours and a PCB designer. So we'll look at the PCB first. This is the same PCB that was available with the uh, original number two and the number one. Really nice designs on it. I uh, really like Wilba's work. Um, all of these PCBs are super high quality. I've never had one fail. Um, really nice. And then this plate introduces a really new uh, cool thing that Wilba came up with um, called leaf spring. So basically these tabs now have these clever cuts that are going to allow these tabs to flex up and down as you type on it. So these thin strips here are actually going to be able to flex. And so even though you're gonna get the acoustics of a brass plate, you should get a much more dampened and flexy typing experience because of this leaf spring than you would with a normal brass plate where this is just a solid uh, leaf of, of metal without these cuts on them. Um, so we've tried this out. The results are really good in my opinion. You get quite a lot of flex from it despite having a brass plate. So I, I personally have always liked the sound of brass plates, but the flex from something like a polycarbonate plate. And I think this is a cool option for getting the best of both worlds. We will still have polycarbonate plates available if you want those. Um, I'm gonna do some testing with the leaf cuts on polycarbonate plates, but I'm afraid that because polycarbonate is already so flexy that it might be a little bit too far in the flexy direction. We'll try it out. There are some things that you can change about this where you increase, where you decrease the size of these cuts so that we'll actually flex less. So it might be that we just have to tune it a little bit for polycarbonate. But that's a quick look at uh, the different components of the kit. So we are going to take this apart and then put it back together. So in order to take it apart, the first thing we have to do is remove this base plate. And this base plate is held on by these eight internal screws uh, in these holes. So you need a M2 hex driver. One of these is gonna be included um, with your kit. So you won't have to worry too much about it. It's nice to have a ball end and a long separate hex driver um, because something like this won't actually fit down these channels, down these holes. Cool. So this just comes right off. Okay, now we have these screws still in here. So we're gonna flip them over and just keep track of where those screws go because they're gonna fall out. So I'm gonna collect all eight of these. We're gonna need them when we put it back together. Okay. Now we can flip this over and using the same two millimeter hex key, can unscrew this mounting block.
Okay, and then again, also being careful to keep track of these, we're gonna flip this over and then collect all of those screws. And this just slides right out like that. Okay, let's go ahead and scoot this PCB and plate out of the way so we can look at the case components. Okay, so these are the main components of the number two. You have this outer seamless shell, has eight internal gaskets that clamp those leafs, those, uh, the fins on the, on the plate that we looked at previously. Have your internal mounting block where we're gonna mount our daughter board. Engraving. And we have our brass base plate. This thing's pretty heavy. All right, so those are all of the main components. Let's go ahead and swap these two. And the next step is to put it all back together. So I've gone ahead and pre-soldered a plate and PCB that we're going to use. Um, but first things first, we need to install our daughter board. So I'm gonna use this uh, iFixit driver, but we'll make sure to include the right size hex driver to install these tiny daughter board screws. There's a 1.3 millimeter driver, so they're a little small. And not, everyone might not have them. So your cable is, needs to already be installed on the daughter board before you screw it in, or you're gonna have a bad time. Um, you wanna make sure that the cable is oriented such that the flat white side of the cable is facing up. You can see here, you can actually see little bits of silver from the wires. So make sure that the flat white side is oriented up and you can saw that like so. Um, I also like to just kind of crimp the cable slightly like this so that it's already out to the left side so that when you put it in, it's already kind of inclined to be routed in this channel. Okay, so now our daughter board is installed. Um, the next step is not to put the PCB and plate on, but actually to put these screws back in. So if you don't put these screws back in before you install the new plate and PCB, you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna have to take everything apart again in order to do it. These screws are actually gonna be held in place by the PCB so that when you flip it over, uh, they don't all fall out. They're gonna be held in place by the PCB. So pop all of these into position. With these bottom four screws, you do wanna make sure that they're like all the way in. Um, see, I, I don't think I can actually show it. You should on the bottom be actually able to see the screw kind of poking through the bottom. I can't flip it or they'd fall out. Um, but if it's up on the side, then it's possible for the PCB to kind of clamp the screw between the mid piece and the PCB, and then it's not gonna screw in all the way. It's gonna be kind of stuck there. And again, you're gonna to have to take everything apart. So just make sure that these are all fully seated in these um, counter bores. So with that in mind, we can grab our assembled PCB and plate. So uh, this is, uh, again, one of our brass leaf spring plates assembled with the WT-80A PCB um, with uh, lubed Gateron black switches. So first thing is to install this connector. Same thing as with the daughter board, you wanna make sure that the flat white part is facing up. Install it here, make sure it's fully seated. At this point, before you put everything together, you wanna to go ahead and plug this into your computer and test it and make sure that everything is good to go. Cause it's, it's a little bit tricky to take all of this apart and you don't want to find out that you know you have a switch that's not working correctly or god forbid a PCB with a problem. Um, you don't want to find that out after you've actually built everything up. So we rest this on top of here just try to kind of make sure that there's not a whole lot of wiggle room um, so uh, but just make sure that it's kind of centered on the uh, on the standoffs left and right on the on the gaskets. Then this just slides over the top. 
And then now this is the kind of tricky part. We're going to reach behind and you want to push before flipping it all the way. You want to push this up and then kind of hold it together like this. This is going to make sure that those base plate screws don't just fall out when you flip it over. So first things first, we are going to only install the four corner screws and then we're going to flip it over again, put some keycaps on and make sure that the plate is aligned correctly. You have to hold this down a little bit um, to compress the gasket slightly in order to install these. We are only going to screw them in until you feel a little bit of resistance from the gaskets. We're not going to actually screw them in all the way. So the second you feel resistance, you can go ahead and stop screwing it in. We're gonna flip it back over. Here, by the way, you can actually see now where these screws would poke out from. So here you can kind of make sure if you flip it, that they're all coming through and that one of them isn't caught up between the PCB um, and the mounting block. So now we have those four installed. We're gonna put some keycaps on and just take a quick look to make sure that the plate is aligned. Okay, actually looks like I got it right the first time that time, so this looks fine. Um, all right, I don't actually have a keycap puller with me, so that's okay. We're still gonna flip this over and install the rest of these. So we're gonna install this in a kind of crosswise pattern so that we can press the gaskets evenly on all sides as we screw it in. We're gonna do this in two passes. I'm going to tighten them down about a full turn, actually about a half turn um, on each one of these. So you're gonna screw it in until you feel resistance from the gaskets and then just go another half turn. And then we're gonna come through and do a second pass doing the same thing in the same pattern. Okay, cool. So. This again is a good time to kind of shake the board a little bit and make sure that all of the screws for the mounting block are poking through. Here you can kind of see it here. So they're all coming through, that's good. That means that you are ready to attach the base plate. So for that, kind of line that up. Just gonna put it carefully over the top. Making sure not to get your black gloves caught between them. Okay, um, now we are going to use the four holes in the plate to tighten the base plate. I like to make sure that the base plate is pushed all the way down, that it's not sticking out the back a little bit. And then I prefer to tighten the four front ones before tightening the back four. Um, you also really wanna make sure that you don't over tighten these. There's no need to over tighten them. Uh, tighten them down until they're snug, give them just a little bit of torque, and then you're good to go. There's not a whole lot of pressure on these. Actually, you know what? I can feel in the back here that this is sticking out slightly. So I'm just gonna press it in as I tighten it down to make sure that it's flush. The reason you don't wanna over tighten these is that these are very small screws. If you over tighten them, they're liable to strip. You really don't need to tighten them very much. Okay, and that's that. So now we have our number two put back together um, and let's go ahead and pop some keycaps on. Okay, there you have it. Uh, number two, revision one, dark gray and brass with modern dolch. Matches very nicely with this dark gray. Um, and that's it. 
Uh, so at this point, you can card here for a typing test uh, to actually see what this sounds like. Um, these are going on sale uh, this coming Saturday, June 27th. There's going to be a pre-order raffle in order to buy one at pre-order. Um, they're actually going to ship hopefully a few months from now. We're going to have additional extra units, both A and B stock for sale afterwards. So thanks so much. Looking forward to talking to more of you soon and have an awesome rest of your day.